<clears throat> okay, uh, hello. Uh, so today we'll talk about three architects all connected with the day of the 1st of June. And today is the 1st of June, 2023. And we'll talk about, uh, we'll start with uh, Rafael Vignoli. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, read a little bit about him. Rafael Vignoli, Beceiro, Beceiro, I don't know how to read, uh, unfortunately, he was born on the 1st of June, and today is the 1st of June in 1944, and he died not too long ago, this year, 2023, on the 2nd of March. Was an Uruguayan, so born in Uruguay, architect based in New York. He was the principal of Rafael Vignoli Architects, which he founded in 1983. The firm had offices in New York City. I don't know if they still have after his death. Um, in New York City, Palo Alto in London, Manchester, Abu Dhabi, and Buenos Aires. Vignoli designed landmark buildings internationally. Uh, Vignoli rose to international preeminence with his Tokyo International Forum, reviewing the Museum of Modern Arts exhibition of models and drawings for the building. While it was still under construction, the then New York Times architecture critic Herbert Michamp hailed Vignoli's design as a mon monument to the idea of openness. We are going to see the project that revives faith in architecture as an instrument of intellectual clarity. That's what Herbert Michamp uh, said. Uh, this was the man, uh, actually, it infuriated me and still does a little bit this. Uh, unveiling of his teeth, uh, you know, this uh, too obvious uh, smile or happiness. But otherwise, he was an architect who did some, some good works. And when he didn't smile like this, I think he was more convincing. I don't know who taught him to, to smile like this. I only know of I.M. Pei, who had a similar uh, uh, infuriating, uh, happy-go-lucky face. Anyway. In South America, because he was born in Uruguay, and uh, I think at five, he moved with his family to Buenos Aires. His fa father was a conductor and working in theater, and he was invited uh, to Buenos Aires to stage something uh, or, you know, to perform a concert uh, of uh, Richard Wagner, and they remained in Buenos Aires. He studied there, and then he opened his office in, uh, in Argentina and Buenos Aires with other people. So now we are going to see some works by Rafael Vignoli in South America. And in my opinion, uh, some of his best works were done there when he was young in, in, in Argentina. This museum, um, he had a very successful practice in Argentina, uh, a large uh, office, a larger group of architects, uh, um, collaborated on uh, successful works. And I think this museum is uh, actually uh, an accurate example of what they were capable, capable of doing at the time. Particularly a uh, housing complex that they built in Buenos Aires attracted my attention and his own house actually. But this is also, I think, a, a good building. This is his own house, was his own house in, um, I don't know if it, uh, the outskirts of Buenos Aires or um, somewhere in, in, in Argentina, but it's possible that it was, in, you know, if not in Buenos Aires, in close proximity. A very interesting house actually. And look, it has a part which is, um, you know, in, 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 in the mound on which the house is built. So even by today's standards, I think it's a rather innovative uh, house. Rafael Vignoli. Also to an extent an accomplished musician, he loved to, to play the piano. I think his mother I'm not sure he, his mother, I know his father was involved with the music, but I'm not sure about his mother. Anyway, he uh, even built a house where uh, he made a, a small, uh, you know, a concert room uh, for, uh, uh, you know, for 
invited people, musicians. He was friends with important musicians. And he himself played the piano um, often. I think even in his architecture office in New York City. But you, you look even at this prism, you know, with that uh, emphatic uh, canopy above that single window, it's it's a striking image. And also, you know, the I don't know if it's genuine black or but close to blackness. This also added something to you know the unexpectedness of the building. Now, what is this? I think these were the people uh, who worked in that office. Um, he is there too, as you can see. Now, this is a very important work, in my opinion. In 1973, so that is 50 years ago, exactly half a, half a century ago, the Rioja housing complex in Buenos Aires in Argentina commissioned in 1969 and designed by this group of young architects. The building was based on a 1960s Japanese design approach called metabolism that made extensive use of organic growth patterns and of tree imagery, starting from a core construction capable of branching and expanding over time in a Buddhist tradition. Adopt, adopting the organic imagery without the, without the Buddhist overtones, the architects executed a number of metabolist designs. The Rioja housing complex was the first. The site was developed by the Bank of the City of Buenos Aires, a subsidized housing for 440 employee families. So 440 families, a large complex, housing complex. It incorporated commercial space and community areas, as well as private residences, giving rise to a solution that is a hybrid of two building types, the tower and the slab. The two elements are completely integrated within a cluster of seven 18-story units linked by 10 bridges, affording both circulation and residential areas. And uh, I'm beginning to show some images and it still looks very fresh, this housing complex, in my opinion, because it was animated not only by a desire to do, uh, you know, just buildings, but also by a social ethos. It was a desire, you know, to, if I am to express myself uh, uh, emphatically, uh, to change the world. It was that, that ethos at the end of the 60s. You know, when, when the young people wanted to, uh, you know, wanted the love and not war, wanted the uh, idealism, wanted flowers, wanted the um, community, wanted communities, you wanted to fight the war in um, Vietnam, wanted, uh, uh, wanted to change the world. And uh, at that time, these uh, Argentinian architects uh, attempted uh, to express some, some of those ideals uh, metabolist, uh, metabolist or not, uh, uh, in, 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 in what they did in, in, in Argentina, in, in Buenos Aires. It's a, it's a housing complex, not for elites, I imagine, the, here are just some employees, yes, of a bank, but, uh, you know, 440 families. It's a social, social program. But the bridges are symptomatic for the idea of bringing people together. You know, it's, it's connecting. As Vincent Scully, when he wrote about his friend Louis Kahn, quoted from the British uh, uh, writer, Froster, who said, I mean, only two words, only connect. And in fact, if we can do just this, to only, so-called only connect, if we can connect, we actually connect with the very uh, root of the word art because the oldest definition of art that I found in the Proto-Indo-European language was like this, art equals bridge equals God. So if we can bridge between man and nature, between man and man, between the earth and the sky, if we can bridge at all levels, I think we, we approach the realm of art. 
I like this project very much. It's vigorous, it's social, it's, uh, it doesn't uh, turn its back on the technology of its time. The bridges in particular are impressive. But the whole, uh, the whole idea, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it's almost some kind of a socialist communism, a socialist capitalist or a capitalistic socialist. I know it's oxymoronic what I'm saying, but this is what I see here. Now, unfortunately, some of this idealism um, um, became diluted after he moved to the United States. Sometimes uh, I think poverty helps. I mean, Argentina is an interesting country, but a little bit uh, less uh, opulent than the United States, although there is a lot of poverty in the United States as well. A housing complex, but a housing complex which has vigor. And it has vigor exactly because it was animated by, uh, by that vivacity of those years, late 60s, the beginning of the 70s. A good work, in my opinion. Around that time also in Spain, well, in Catalonia, near Barcelona, Taller de Arquitectura was also exploring new ways of bringing people together in, you know, massive or large uh, housing complexes. I remember, remember somehow now, maybe strangely, a project that was um, uh, done by a, a Romanian uh, young uh, architect, Justin Baroncea, uh, he, an idea he had to rebuild World Trade Center in New York City. And he was inspired by the, the sculpture, The Kiss by Constantin Brâncuș. So he imagined two towers, a black one and a white one, and they were extending the so-called arms towards each other. So it was this um, uh, bridging between the white tower and the black tower. Also two towers, which were brought together in the act of, uh, of an embrace. So I thought in relation with his project to call it not World Trade Center, but World Embrace Center, W-E-C. Here, I look at these bridges and it's about the same thing. It's about uh, bringing together two towers or several towers, connecting them. Again, it's about connecting, uh, bridging, and this is very important. Uh, bravo to these Ar Argentinian architects. Now, the bank of the city of Buenos Aires, um, Rafael Vignoli and the others, or should I say the others, plus I don't know exactly what his position was in that office. Now, the Vignoli's musical refuge, uh, I told you that he was, um, you know, a rather accomplished musician as well, playing the piano. I found this uh, website, you know, Rafael Vignoli's musical refuge. Uh, now we are in the United States. Uh, and uh, for some reason I include it, it's not, the work is not shown in a chronological order. For some reason I felt like introducing here this reference to his uh, musical refuge um, somewhere, I guess, in the state of New York, in the United States, because after his activity in, in Argentina for a number of years, he relocated to um, uh, the United States, and, and, and that's where he lived and worked. But he built the house for himself and this uh, musical refuge, where he invited some uh, important musicians with whom he was friends.
here he is with his wife and the uh, cook. Yes, uh, you know, at this level of success, you can imagine that, uh, you know, they afforded the cook. All happy, it seems. I saw pictures of Rafael Vignoli with three pairs of, of glasses. And you see him with glasses here too at the dinner table. And I imagine, um, I think I read somewhere that uh, he was, uh, he needed three pairs all the time on him. One was actually for playing the piano, uh, reading the musical scores. One was for, uh, I guess, uh, seeing far, long distance, and one for uh, reading and uh, working uh, on architectural projects, something like this. I don't know if I have here a picture of him with three pairs of glasses, you know, hanging from his neck on his chest. Now, this is the project about her, about which Herbert Michon uh, talks so eloquently, that is a monument to openness. He won the competition, a major competition, and he built it. The Tokyo Forum uh, is this building here if we are to call it a building. It is a building, but uh, you know, with several uh, large, uh, large structures. So all of these are, are his. He won the competition with, uh, with, uh, with this. Here we see again bridges, and these bridges indeed are, are symptomatic for, uh, you know, for dialogue, for openness, for bring, bringing people together. Rafael Vignoli in Tokyo. So I mentioned Herbert Michon, he's dead. Raphael Vignoli is dead, he died this year. Uh, Herbert Michon, whom I knew personally, he died uh, some years ago. Um, this is how life is, it's limited. We have only a certain period of time in which we can claim that we live. Although as somebody said, the problem is not to add more years to your life, but to add more life to your years. I think we should remember this. Not to add more years to our lives, but to add more life to our years. There are remarkable uh, accomplishments in this building. You look at the, you know, the, the austerity and monumentality and also simplicity and refinement of this very space, and there are other similar spaces within this large, uh, large building. Rafael Vignoli. I rush a little bit because today we'll also talk about uh, Sir Norman Foster, none other than Sir Norman Foster, and it was not enough, Toyo Ito, all born on, on, on June 1st, as if they talk to each other to be born on the same day. We are still in Tokyo. Four three two Park Avenue, New York City. A good tower built by him is this one. Well, I understood if I remember correctly, or no? I think he did. Be, he had troubles with this tower. I know there was some uh, flooding. Something happened, but um, it's it's still a good building. 
uh, very, you know, uh, without uh, pretending to be organic or fancy or anything. And it's in its uh, vertical, uh, uh, you know, clarity or correctness. I think is 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 a good uh, is a good uh, skyscraper. But I read there were some problems with it. Uh, yes, flooding or some something happened to the to this tower. Anyway, architecturally speaking, it seems to be fine. Well, less fine perhaps is the. But this is maybe my envy, you know, the the Dix Kalman volute of, of these large spaces, which cost a lot of money. I mean, only millionaires could live in the, in such a building with such views. Of course, no window opens, so air conditioning is needed. Otherwise, you melt down in the in the summer and you freeze in the winter. But the people who can afford such apartments, uh, I guess, uh, have no problem with the electricity bills and uh, you know all kinds of uh, you know spaces for um, amusement because even millionaires need to be amused and need to be you know uh, need need the health clubs you know uh, to ride bicycles which go nowhere and the swimming pool, of course, and marble and uh, everything clean and nice. You can imagine just the maintenance of an apartment here would cost a fortune. Otherwise, square, square windows, uh, you know, an elegant modernism for the well-to-do. And on the right, we see Central Park. The, the excellent work of Olmsted, the landscape uh, architect. Uh, so this is the tower by um, Raphael Vignoli. In the meantime, uh, other towers sprang even taller and thinner and more uh, audacious and so on, like the one built by shop architects. But still the one by uh, Raphael Vignoli uh, stands out with its, uh, you know, clear um, verticality. Okay, this was a rather insufficient uh, presentation of his on his work, but we paid homage to him. Now we'll we'll talk about uh, Sir Norman Foster. Also, you know, a rather short presentation. Uh, you can easily have one thousand. Uh, uh, 1,000 um, images uh, with his work. But 